Hello and welcome to the Euro 2020 magazine show. We've got a fantastic hour of action just for you guys today. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Right, James? Yeah, we've got a couple of great guests. First up, we have Paul Parker, Manchester United and England legend, who's going to talk a little bit about what it takes to play in an international tournament and a little bit about England's chances as well. Ooh, fancy hearing from him. We also are going local with Fabian Kwok. He is, of course, one of the players in the SPL for Hagang United. He'll be in studio to discuss his fantasy league team. I'm excited as well to, to know more. Yep, and besides the guests, we have a lot more content for you as well. We have a super skills challenge, we have audience quiz time, and we have lots of opportunities for you to win prizes, including international and English Premier League jerseys. So I can't wait for all of that. Vamos, guys, let's go! And we've got loads of exciting action coming up in the next couple of days. So let's look at the fixtures that are definitely going to keep us uh, late at night. I'm looking, of course, at Turkey and Italy. Italy won at the last World Cup, but I'm fencing Turkey's chances uh, this tournament, James. And of course, Wales and Switzerland, guys. You can see I've got Wales on. Lovely grandpa. He was Welsh, so uh, this tournament is for him. Definitely fencing Gareth Bale as well. James, what about you? I see that look in your eyes, man. I, 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 I do fancy Gareth Bale, but I, my family all live in Wales, and, but they definitely don't support Wales. <laughs> I got a couple of games lined up here. You know, there's a Scandinavian match here, Denmark, Finland. Finland in their first ever European Championships. We have the, this Belgian team, heavily favoured, but perhaps missing Kevin De Bruyne up against Russia. And then for me, the match of the week, England against Croatia, a repeat of the World Cup semi-final, hoping England can do a little bit better this time. Absolutely. I'm also going to be keeping my eyes on Netherlands, who will be taking on Ukraine, as well as Sweden and Spain, excited about this Spanish young team under Luis Enrique. Well, off the pitch, actually, there's been lots of injuries as well that's been happening, of course, including Donny van der Beek, right? Yeah, we lost Donny van der Beek this week, and earlier in the week as well, we lost Trent Alexander-Arnold from the England squad. So the England squad, they've, they've won both their warm-up games, but they haven't looked very convincing at the moment, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's because, I mean, there's been some stuff happening off the pitch as well. I mean, in their warm-up games, you see Rashford here, he scored, uh, but and, they don't And look... Henderson missed. <laughs> <laughs> how I to do, score I... a penalty, how to miss a penalty. <laughs> exactly. I mean, some interesting stuff happening as well. But, I mean, looking at um, also stuff that's happening off the field, Phil Foden, he went blonde. I'm talking about the hairstyles that are uh, taking over social media, really. Well, you know, they gave the Chelsea and Man City players a week off after the Champions League final to rest, and it, it seems some of them used that time really wisely, right? Mm. I do fancy him as a blonde, actually, James. I think it suits Foden's look. I think he wants to be a bad boy, maybe. Yeah, but, I mean, this, this brings back memories, right? I mean, someone yeah. else, 1996, England Yaza. against Scotland. There if we he go. does the same thing against Scotland, all will be forgiven. But, you know, <laughs> blonde hair is a big thing at tournaments. I remember all the way back... 1994, the whole Romanian team Yeah, went I don't blonde. remember that, sorry. Dan too, Petrescu, look at that. That's a legendary header. But European Championships, Paul Pogba also had went blonde uh, yep. last time around. But for me, the best haircut of all time Was is Paris. definitely Ivan Perisic for Croatia. That is how you show your patriotism right there. I hope he does that hair. Or he rather won all the Croatian players will be doing this when they beat England, right? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Well, next up, of course, lots of things have been happening um, elsewhere in space, rather. Two things that I love the most in the world, which is football and space. I want to go to space one day, James. But speaking of which, I've got Kylian Mbappe here, my favourite player as well. He had a very interesting conversation with an astronaut from the European Space Agency. You guys can see that they had a bit of a banter from space. And of course, he's, co he's carrying the Euro 2020 ball here, which makes it really cool, actually. Yeah, what a lot of people don't realise is that that was actually a shot by M Musa Sissoko in French training actually <laughs> ended up on the International Space Station. So it just happens to. Yeah. Dope. Great stuff. I mean, speaking of Mbappe as well, he doesn't know where Newcastle is, even though he's been all the way to space, rather. i got to be honest, I've never been to Newcastle <laughs> either. I, I hear it's a bit grim up north, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Newcastle is... Uh, it, we're speaking, of course, about the football manager game, which Antoine Griezmann was involved in. Of course, you guys know he loves his FM, and, and unfortunately, or rather, fortunately, he's got... Uh, Mbappé and his team, and Mbappé's reaction was, where is Newcastle? Yeah, let's take a look at that. I bought Newcastle, I bought 134 million. What? Newcastle. Newcastle, what? Newcastle, what? Newcastle, what? Newcastle, what? Newcastle, what? Newcastle, what? So I think we've all celebrated football manager success, maybe not to the same level he has, but I guess the secret there is if you're going to sign Kylian Mbappé, maybe, maybe not for Newcastle. 
<laughs> we never know these things with, with, with football changing all the time, but I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more insights about the Euros, right? Yep, and who better to hear it from than a player who has played international football with England, played in the Premier League. We are very, very proud to have with us today the one and only Paul Parker. Thank you for joining us, Paul. Not a problem at all. So how's the UK, Paul, in this uh, <laughs> post-pandemic world? How are we doing? Well, one thing we have got, we're replicating the weather at the moment. What it is in Singapore, it's very warm. Not as warm, but it's, it's nicer than what, it was, than what it was three weeks ago. We all like that for a summer tournament, though, right? It wouldn't be a European Championships or a World Cup without a good English summer to support it in, right? Oh, it definitely needs it. it just a good feel factor. And everybody needs a good feel factor at this moment in time. So the weather is definitely adding something. Well, some countries are going to get a feel-good factor. Some countries maybe not going to get a feel-good factor over the, over the next couple of weeks as we go. But we haven't seen you in Singapore, obviously, for a while now. Paul, you've been uh, back in the UK for three years now, right? Yeah, nearly, yeah, yeah, three years, yeah. So what are, you, what are you keeping busy with in the UK at the moment? I'm just still doing, involved in um, football to a point of doing um, commentaries, yep. working with um, a couple of um, establishments here in the sporting side of the football. And really that's what, I, that's what I'm doing at this moment in time is just keep trying to keep as active in football as possible. Right, Paul, you were part of England's right back brotherhood. And I just have to ask you with Trent Alexander-Arnold's exclusion from the squad due to injury, what do you make of it and how must he be feeling? Well, I look at the situation with Trent Alexander and I was very surprised. I think there's a lot of people here that we had um, named so many fullbacks. To name four right backs just didn't make any sense at all. If you overload yourself with forwards, everyone would go, yep, can understand it because you might need to chase the game. So you want as many alternatives as possible. But everybody in their own ways can defend. But to score goals and create is a different form of football. So to have so many fullbacks didn't make any sense at all. And Trent Alexander was the issue, really. Should he be in? Should he be out? I think that Gareth Southgate got forced into a situation of inclusion because his form hadn't been very good. Defensively, if you look at all, all the, the other three fullbacks, he was the poorest defensively. As much as they talk about he assists all the time, as far as I see it, if you're a defender, you defend. And, um, and that wasn't going well for him at Liverpool. His club form was poor. His injury wasn't good. In certain ways, it's good for Liverpool because they can get him back now. They can get him sorted and ready for the new season. For England, it opens up a space for someone else to come in who can maybe add that little bit more like Ben White can do. Ben White can play in a three as what he's done at Brighton. He can play in a back four. And he can play in midfield as he's done on numerous occasions for Brighton. So... Trent Alexander is, is not, in my opinion, going to be a big miss for England. Now, to that point, of course, uh, about selection choices, um, England now has Rhys James, Kieran Tripper, as well as uh, Carl Walker, I believe. So how is Southgate going to make you know, selections? He's got so, much, uh, so many players at his disposal. What do you make of that? Well, choices <laughs> and the choices he's got are, are really, for anybody with a big squad, it's hard work. Sometimes I think, for a manager to go in the tournament, if you could guarantee that you weren't going to get players suspended or any injuries, I'm sure a manager would like to go there with 15 players and not to have those difficult choices or, you know, yeah. I should say more than that because they've got more on the bench. But if you could just pick 15, 16 players and utilise them, I'm sure the output of what you get from it would be a lot better and the, man and the managing would be easier as well. It's a difficult job. It's not going to please people. People are already telling him Gareth Southgate, what he should be, who he should be picking. We should be all out attack and use all our attacking players. Football's not all that easy, or otherwise we'd all be doing it in the sense of managing the club side or managing national, the national side. In any industry, the hardest job is to manage, is to make a big decision, manage people. And that's why there are so few out there who can do, do, those, do that job, I should say. So it's, it's interesting because... I think there's a, theory, there's a school of thought here that who will start at right back will depend upon whether Gareth Southgate goes with four at the back or, or, or three at the back, right? And obviously with Harry Maguire potentially missing the first game or two, that's a big miss. You mentioned Ben White's come in there. Tyrone Mings has 
not had the best couple of uh, games in the warm-up, and I think that may have contributed to, to Ben White getting that final spot as well. Is there a chance that, that Gareth Southgate puts Carl Walker into that back three for a bit of pace? And then if he does, does he go with Trippier or James, or do you think he'll stick with a 4-4-2? See, now, you, you've asked a question there, and it's, it's a fantastic question because it's one that every, it's bouncing around, really. Um, when you talk about Carl Walker going as one of the three, it makes sense. You've said what, you've come out and said exactly the reason why people would look at that because of his pace, and it gets him out of trouble. Sometimes it gets him into trouble because he <laughs> relies on it maybe too much because, you, you know, I got told during my part of my career by someone that I respected very much, is that I can't, shouldn't rely on pace because you can always trip up. Um, <laughs> so Carl Walker does give you that opportunity to get, put him in a three. I look at Trippier, he's had a fantastic season. Atletico Madrid is working with an incredible coach who knows how to close games down. And he, know, and he wants players who know how to defend in all areas of the park. Doesn't matter if you're centre forward, you, you help out and you defend as well as score goals. I look at Reese James. I like, I really like Rhys James. He's a powerhouse who's very technical, but he can deliver crosses. He does get forward, but he can defend as well. And he can play wing back as he's done for Chelsea. He can play right back, which he's done for Chelsea. And just of late, he's gone and played as one of the three. And Espy Aqueta, surprise, surprise, has played as a wing back. So he's very variable as well. Go Southgate. When you look at that right side, what he's got, he's got such adaptable, strong-minded players, and all three of them are good defenders as well. I'm with you. I think Gal Southgate will go to a three. Um, if I was him going to a three, I think I would definitely maybe look at kind of with... Um, it's got to be Stones. It has to be... Um, I think if Carl Walker's won because of his form and because he's on a high, because he's just won a Premier League title. The left-hand side is a big problem. We know that, for some unknown reason, Maguire like, likes to play on the left, even though he can't use his left foot, strange as it sounds. Um, Mings, I don't think you can trust him. I mean, he done something ridiculous against Austria, which he should have been sent off for in normal circumstances. He makes too many... Too many mistakes, too many mistakes. He's not really, in my opinion, an international defender in the fact of his concentration levels aren't high enough. So I'm going to back off there and not even get involved in trying to pick a team because I wouldn't want that job as a manager to know what to do. I think defensively, defence, talking about defenders at this moment, has never been a topic when England have ever gone into competitions. It's always been the people who can win your games of football. So... It's a little bit of a rarity for England at this moment in time. And, and that's a discussion that's happening again, right? In the same way that many years ago we had discussions around should Paul Gascoigne be in the team or not, be in the squad or not. And this time around, all the talk is around Jack Grealish, maybe. Should Jack Grealish be in the starting lineup or not? Well, we look at Jack Grealish and he's, he hasn't played a lot of football at the back end. I think yeah. people are trying to... Um, in Vidage, that he's going to be a new Paul Gascoigne. They, they've got the people of my era and maybe just after looking and think, oh, he's another Paul Gascoigne. He's a million miles from being Paul Gascoigne because he hasn't done anything yet at all. Um, he's a big fish at this moment in the small, small pond at Aston Villa. And people are hoping and they're just going on little glimpses. I'm, I'm a skeptic. And I think many people who saw me on Singapore TV would realise that I'm a sceptic about things. Um, he hasn't done enough, in my opinion, to actually to be guaranteed. If we're looking for flashes of a player, then you're going to get that. If you're talking about players who should start because they've been consistent all season for their size and their size have achieved things this season, or me, me saying achieved, they've won things. Phil Foden, he has to get Phil Foden in his team. He has to get Mason Mount, who has led Chelsea. And if you'd asked him that question six months ago, I would have said, no, it shouldn't be. But since Frank Lampard has moved on, he has stepped up to another level and he's been so consistent. So those two should be definitely pe what people should be talking about. Those two should start. When you talk about Jack Grealish, I think people have gone, are getting a little bit, maybe a little bit sentimental and, and hoping that he can deliver. Absolutely. Paul, I have to ask, 
England have a very tricky group ahead um, considering the fact that they have to get through to the next round. So what are your thoughts? What are England's chances about advancing to the next uh, round and how difficult exactly is this group going to be for them? Well, with the group, they've that, got a, a difficult group. We're up against a team which we, a country I should say, that we know very well in Croatia. I was there in 2006 at Wembley and that was um, that game is known as the Wally with the Brolly game. <laughs> when uh, Croatia come to Wembley and, and they embarrassed England. And then there was the semi-final when again they embarrassed England. You know, we scored first, scored first and early, which is a worry for England because every time we score early, we sit back and defend it and we've lost so many games, big games. So it tells you the mentality isn't right in the players, um, within the players, but the person who has to take the blame is the manager. So this game coming up against an ageing Croatia team, everyone's saying they're ageing, we've got young players. But on the other side of the coin, as you mostly well know, ageing does mean experience. You've got knowledge. You might not be able to run as quick, you might not be able to run as far, but you know how to use those two two kind of negative points, as people put it, in your favour. So that could maybe go against England. And then we've got the old enemy in Scotland to play with a very energetic and a very, quite a decent, maybe one of the better midfields Scotland have had in recent years. They've got a manager who has turned them round and gotten to Euros when they haven't really been anywhere near, near getting there. And their results of late have shown their resilience they've got they've come back they've got a great draw against the Netherlands very unlucky where they should have maybe won the game but a late goal by the Netherlands gives them a draw it's a friendly people want to say but they'll use that as a positive going into a tournament so England have got a very very difficult group the Czech Republic you know it's easy to turn around and say yeah we've beaten them of late but it's tournament football different mentality it's a, it is a tough group and the first game against Croatia is so important. You don't want to get beat in your first game, but if you get a draw, it still puts pressure on the second game. But, but the biggest onus of going into the second game is if you haven't won but you've got a draw, is that you're going into that game knowing that you you aren't desperate to get anything. As you still got another game, but to lose your first game is a big is a big worry. And it's teams that are expected to lose their first games and there's teams like England who if they lose their first games will be crying out, the press will be crying out for the manager's heads, they'd want six players hung, drawn and quartered, um, <laughs> there'd be so much negativity going on, it'd be incredible. So, so England have a tough draw, even if they get through the group, likely in the next round they probably get France, Germany or Portugal or in the following round they'll, they'll, they'll get Belgium depending upon how it plays out. So, I mean, I know there's a bit of home advantage here for England more than anyone else, but realistically, what do you think would be a good tournament for England this time around? Well, I mean, if they're going to, what you, England have got to go out and try and win that group. And a lot of people said that if they win the group, they go up against the big boys early. Well, you have to play them at some point if you want to achieve anything. So the best, the best way for England to do, and on a positive note, is to win the group. Win the group with maximum points. So you're going into the next stage on a high. That's what, that's what England should be doing. And then when you then go into the next bit and you hope that you can go through it, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm looking at England and people are going to say that we're at home as such because the majority of the games are here. But we're in that moment of, you know, stadiums not being full. Um, there's, there's so many things we've got to look at the way football's been this season all over Europe, all over the world, all over the world, players' mentality mentalities could be different. It could be still all over the place, certain places. So it's unpredictable at this moment in time what's going to happen next. But where England are expected to win, even though we've only ever won one tournament, we're still <laughs> we see ourselves as winning everything. So it's, again, that's my sceptical side coming out there. So for me, at this moment, I wouldn't want us to exactly come out and say where England are expected, because we are expected to get to the final and then... There you are. Get to the final, and then people then might be a little bit content and see what happens next. 
Right, Paul, I was going to ask, is it coming home? But I think that's going to be there. <laughs> is it coming home? You know, the, the 55 years of hurt now, right? <laughs> it's not 30 years of hurt anymore. It's 55 years. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Paul, I have to ask, you were part of uh, the England team in Italia, the World Cup Italia in 1990. I want to ask as well, what is uh, the mental state of the players right now? What can they bring into this tournament? And what should they, you know, how do they prepare themselves for, for such a, a big stage like this? Well, it's, um, it's, it's difficult for me to answer that question because of my my time in a tournament football with England was I was sitting there, you know, a few days before it, not really expecting to play. I was just there. There was a Gary Stevens in front of me who had played for what three years, three years as a regular player for England. I would say played in the eighty eight Euros. So he would have gotten that, yeah, 80, sorry, 88. He would have been four, maybe three, four years as a regular player. Bobby Robson was loyal. I wasn't expecting to play. I was just there, just happy just to, to be there. But then after that first game, which we drew, things kind of changed. So all you want really is, is when you're, you're sitting there, you, you're desperate for to get going. I mean, the players are going to be sitting there watching that first game which is um, the Italy-Turkey game, and they're going to be on edge. And especially if they suddenly look at the Italians, who have done very well qualifying, they're excellent. If you can go beyond excellent, you would use that word. You look at Turkey, and then you, you think to yourself how they qualified, and some of the players they've got who are gaining more experience at better club football now than what they have been in previous years. So they got better, their players are playing with and against better players. So you're looking at two decent teams. So all you, you're looking there and you're hoping you can see a weakness and believe that's going to take you further as well because you're seeing weaknesses in other teams to help you as an individual and help you as in your involvement in the team to go further. So it's, it's nerve wracking because you just want to get started. You can't wait that journey to the ground. And if you're one of the 11 who's starting, you want that game to start very, very quickly because you mostly haven't slept properly the night before. You've been, you've had a dream and that game's already kicked off in your head. And all of a sudden, the worst thing happens, you wake up and the game hasn't started yet. So your good game goes out the window. So Paul, you, you mentioned Italy there, right? And, and Italy's, my, Italy's my pick at the moment. And not a lot of people are talking about them. A lot of people are talking about France and Belgium and of course Germany and Spain always show up. But as you say, their qualification, 10 wins out of 10. They just thrashed the Czech Republic the other night. Again, it's a friendly, but okay, 4-0. So you mentioned Italy. We've talked about England. Besides those teams, who else, are you, who else do you think can win this tournament? Um, you could, I mean, I just mentioned one of them. You could say Turkey. Turkey mm -hmm. have got, looking at somebody who could, you know, threaten, it could be Turkey, could maybe cause an up yeah. upset. I'm looking at... Italy and Turkey to qualify from that group, and then you, and you don't, you just don't know. I mean, it could be another case of 2004 because football has been so unpredictable this season, as you know. Doesn't matter where you go in the world, doesn't matter what country. Some things have happened in in in, in, in leagues this season, which normally you would never expect. You've seen it in the Premier League. You've seen it in the Italian league where Juve have been so strong and all of a sudden Inter have come through. AC Milan has suddenly had that spell where they were top of the league. They've been better for, for what's gone on around. Turkey could be somebody who could cause an upset. And you talk about Italy. And the reason why no one is talking about Italy because they're a team of unknown players as such because they're coming from not big clubs. I think Chiellini is the only old stager there. He's going to be playing. Everyone still knows how, how good he is. He's leading the team of young men. He's respected by so many players within his own country and all over the world. Italians under a coach, a flamboyant coach as well, a coach who come over and he won a Premier League title in the UK. Lots of experience. Knows, knows it, obviously knows players. He's dug deep. He hasn't gone with the big boys. So they, Italians are a team. They're not a team full of individuals. So it's easy to name Belgium. It's easy to talk about the Germanies. It's easy to talk about the Portugals with their superstars. So um, I think if you're going to look for somebody who could cause upsets, could be could be Turkey. So you've heard it here from Paul Parker first. Potentially, will we see a repeat of the opening game in the final? Turkey against Italy. 
maybe we'll see how we go paul really thank you very much for joining us today thank you for sharing those insights stay safe and we hope to hear from you again soon thank you very much so now we've got an exciting segment for you we've got some of the spl and singapore women's national team's best footballers taking part in six challenges at our Tempanese hub to see who is our skills champion. With the support of Football Association and the Singapore Premier League, let's go down to OTH and see what happened. Hi guys, we are here at our Tempanese hub in Town Square, the beautiful part of Singapore. And guys, today we have a very, very exciting skills challenge for you involving eight of the best stars in the SPL. I'm excited to find out how they fare against the girls. So I'm going to go to James now to tell us more about the challenge. So the first thing is a strong foot penalty. The second is a weak foot penalty. The third challenge is to hit the crossbar for the ladies from the penalty spot. and for the men from the edge of the box. The fourth challenge is a series of free kicks from across the top of the D. The fifth challenge is a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And the last challenge is keepy uppy, but with only one foot. Got it? Thanks so much, James. Now let's go to our first contestant from Tampines Rovers. We have Taufik. Hi, Taufik. Which challenge are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward for the penalty challenge. Awesome. Can you tell me who your tip is to win the Euros and why? I think France because they got a pretty good strong team. Yeah, and I love Mbappe. It was good, but it's only my free kick. I think uh, I should uh, improve on my free kick. I'm not a free kick taker, but I should improve on my free kick. You think you can win the challenge? Maybe. I think I did well for the challenge. Great effort from Taufik there at OTH, right James? Yeah, I gotta say, uh, these challenges are a little bit harder than, the, than they look. Uh, particularly the free kick. I mean, you look at I it and you that. think free kick, you know, Easy, easy shot, but it's actually harder without the wall because okay. the goalkeeper can see it all the way, which means you've got to beat him in the corners or you've got to beat him with pace. So it'll be interesting to see if anybody can beat Taufik's score there. Well, we've got a professional footballer here in the house to take us through, you know, we've got fantasy football as well. Uh, we've got Fabian Kwok here from Haugang. But before I want to start, I just want to remind you guys out there that our fantasy league is still up and running. The code is here. You guys can join. And thank you so much. We've got over a thousand of you guys joining us. I'm super psyched about that actually, super exciting. So I, I, I guess that means I'm going to be nah, no, 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 number we're, we're 900 <laughs> this way. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you are going to win. <laughs> I, uh, I have never won, a, I came second in my, in my FPL yeah. league this year and I was so excited but I was conflicted because the guy that won, he won because he had Harry Kane mm. and Kane was scoring every week so I was sat there going, if Kane scores I lose? 
<laughs> and if Kane doesn't score, I win? It's very hard. Okay, well, Can't great stuff, James. Um, we're gonna, today, we're going to find out as well about your recovery. What's been going on with you, Fabian, and, and Haugang as well? First and foremost, thank you for having me, Ash and James. Uh, very happy to be here to share my thoughts on Euros. Uh, unfortunately, I got injured recently, missed three games. Um, but I'm happy to say that I'm back training and uh, very excited and looking forward for the league to resume. Alright, thanks Fabian. Let's go to Haugang season in general. What, what do you fancy their chances are? Are they going to win the SPL this season? I think we are not looking that far ahead. We are taking really game by game. But it's good to see that so far, halfway through, we have managed to get decent results against teams like Lion City Sailors and Tampines Rovers. But I think the one that we really want to, to get points from is Alvarex Negada. You know, I yeah. think overall, looking at the SPL, we want to try to let a local team lift the trophy after many seasons. Yes. So, I mean, like I said, not looking, not looking too far ahead, taking game by game. And hopefully, Haugang can qualify for the AFC Cup, which we sort of missed out this year. Yep. So, that would be my personal target. Oh, okay, all the best, but maybe James, you have a couple of questions I know you want to ask. Yeah, I mean, we're on a break right now from the SPL yeah. because the, the Lions are over there playing uh, in, the, in the qualifiers. And it's been a couple of rough games, right, against uh, Palestine and Uzbekistan. Uh, you know, as a player, when you're looking at that and some of your teammates are out there, how are you, how are you feeling? You know, I, I think maybe as well a consideration about not having played together it's, I mean, we have some fresh faces in the team, youngsters coming through, but I think also we are missing some of the leaders in the team, like Harris especially. Yeah. So that could be a factor, but nonetheless, I think not, they have very tough opponents. You know, it's not easy playing against this team. So These teams are 50 and 70 yeah. places yeah. ranked higher. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, credit to them. They, they are out there, you know, representing the country. Yeah. So, you know, we give them... Uh, support regardless the results you know being Singaporeans absolutely regardless, you know, we have to give them the support so win lose or draw uh, for me I'm I'm behind the boys okay. love, love it already now speaking of the Euros who's your pick this year to win well it's, it was a big <laughs> headache you know when James invited me to join the fantasy league uh, oh, it was difficult because you know mainly following the English Premier League so I uh, my pick was to have the English team win the Euro 2020s, but you know, at the same time, if we all say it enough, nah. we might <laughs> believe <laughs> it believe. enough to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's we, wish it into being. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they have some young blood coming through, so that's exciting to watch. But not only England, I mean, teams like Belgium, they have a really strong squad, uh, as well as, you know, Germany has always been favourite. Uh, so it's, it's hard to say. I, I, Rivals. Yeah, the <laughs> only one I, I, I think Portugal defending their title, I don't really see it happening. I don't know. I, I didn't see them winning it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I still don't know how they won it. Yes. <laughs> so I, so I didn't, I, the only player I got from Portugal was Diaz. Yes. So because he, mainly because he had a really good season with, yeah. with Manchester City. Yeah, I mean, I, I see one of your favourites up there, Ash. Yeah, I see Olivia Giroud. My favourite, really? I didn't really fancy him in the last World Cup. No goals. He does look good, I have to admit. He's got the baller sort of look. Sorry, I know the girls love Giroud, <laughs> I have to say. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of doubting him. I'm not rating him highly um, up as a, as, you know, as a first-team player. Probably we, on the sub. Yeah. We, we were talking before the show and, and, and Fabian was telling me he, he picked Giroud because he played every game at the World <laughs> Cup. But I was telling him, fantasy football, Giroud... I, if I remember rightly, I don't think he even had a uh, shot yeah. <laughs> in the whole tournament. He definitely wow. didn't score a goal, which yes. he may have got a trophy, but from a fantasy football yeah. point of view, yeah. doesn't do a lot, yeah. right? Basically, my consideration when I was picking my team, I just wanted to go with, with a broad range of players who would I think would get as much time in the, yeah. on the pitch. Fair enough. Yeah, so that yeah. was my consideration. And I think although Olivier Giroud don't score the goals, but I think he was crucial in the team that won the World Cup. And, and he just came on in their last game as yeah. a sub yes, and yes. scored two goals. Yeah. So yes, uh, right. we giving can't a, criticize Giving the coach a yeah. Yeah. Anybody else catches your eye up there, Ash? Um, obviously, I had the same pick. We're going to go to my team. And Neuer is also my pick as goalkeeper. I mean, the experience is he has the experience mm. yeah. out there. But I don't really fancy. Why is Kante on the bench? Oh. Ingolo, Ingolo, Kante. You guys know that song? 
Uh, and, and, and of course, and why of course, is Van yeah. der Beek on the bench yeah, when Van der Beek? Yeah. <laughs> Someone hasn't been checking the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lucky we bring you on here, we <laughs> let you take. But I want to I wanna point out something here that, that, that Fabian has done, which I think a lot of you watching at home may not have fully read the rules. Fabian hasn't, in terms of substitutions. And, and just explain how the substitutions work. It's different than the FPL in that in this league, when you put players on the bench, you can then sub them into the team between matches. So, so let me give you a simple example here of what I mean, because you'll see Fabian, he has uh, Oliver Giroud and Joshua Kimmich, Antonio Rudiger there, who are all playing late in this, in this match day in their games. So I'll give you an example here of what I mean. If you take a situation like this, right, and you have Donnarumma, the it Italy keeper, and let's say he has a really bad game, Turkey score three goals, and he gets minus one point, and you have Loris on the bench, Loris is playing much day, later in the match day, all the way up on Wednesday against Germany. You can decide between Saturday and Wednesday to swap Loris in and give up Donnarumma's points or no points if it goes that way. But I'll give you another example. If Donnarumma has a clean sheet and saves a penalty, nine points from his game, then you decide, am I going to swap in Loris or not if Donnarumma scores nine points? Probably not. Because if you do sub in Loris, you lose Donnarumma's points. So what this means, practically speaking, is you should look at the days within the match day and you should try to put all the players you have in your squad who are playing on day one, day two, day three in the starting lineup and put the players that are on day three, day four, day five on the bench so that then you can see how the first set of players do and then you can sub out. So when you see my squad here, People are looking mm. at my squad and wondering, how does he have Cristiano Ronaldo on the bench? The Tony Cruz, Joshua <laughs> Kimmich. The answer is because I'm going to see how these guys on the pitch do first. And if Harry Kane, God help me, scores no goals and gets no <laughs> points, then I can bring Ronaldo on in place of him. And you can even change your captain with the same logic as well. But just okay. bear in mind, once you make the sub, you're stuck with whatever the subs do as well. Okay. All right? Okay. We're getting fantasy football schooled here, guys. Yeah, yeah it's Not important to get this right. So here's Ash's team. And, and I think we can see what Ash has done here. Ash, talk us through your tactics. You know, I just wanted all the star players, to yeah. be honest. No, just kidding. You know, whenever I think of Euros and big tournaments, I'm thinking of all the number nines, the attackers. That's why I want experienced players. Lewandowski, I know, might be his last Euros. But I do like his style and everything. I know he will score. I know he will score. I'm not sure how Poland will go, but I know he will score. He's that... Like uh, signature number nine. Of course, how can I forget Mbappe, guys? <laughs> Woo! I hope he comes in, like, you know, maybe becomes like golden, what do you call it? Golden boy golden of the boot, tournament? Yeah. Golden boot? Golden boot. Golden, golden boot. boot, okay. <laughs> for goal and of course, scorer. Ronaldo. Golden ball for player. There yeah. we go, golden ball. Golden ball. Yeah, there's so many. But you know, I say, I say João Felix because I know he's a little bit, he was overrated for Portugal at one point of time. I think he still hasn't reached his peak. So I hope that he actually, you know, makes his mark in this tournament. And it's interesting because he's marked as a midfielder. I know. Yeah. I know. He's more of a, yeah, I don't know. What, what, is, his, what is his original he's position? Really, he's a forward. He's a yeah. forward, so but in the squad, he's a midfielder. We're moving him a little bit, uh, I guess, right wing, am I right? So, and yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I've got Noya, same as Fabian as well, in the goalkeeping um, department. But, you know, I was watching Trippier for Atletico Madrid and I did like what, how he's performing. Um, I know he's not really a favourite for Southgate. But he takes sure. set pieces. Yeah, he does. Well. He's useful. Yeah. He's got a good, great leadership yeah. thing about him. I need that in my team. Even though Ronaldo is there already. So, But, you know, having listened to our dear, dear friend over here, I'm not sure if my tactics are right. I might do some changes. I might put Rodri instead in, up there. I do yeah. like that you have a Welsh player yes. as well. <laughs> and it's signature. not Gareth Bale. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I, Would you like I, to tell us about yeah. Colwell? What was... Behind your thinking? <laughs> or was he the Welsh player at the right price? No, I, had, I had like four million left. So I had to spend it on Google. We all have one of those yeah, players, right? I mean, F Fabian, when, when, you look at, when you looked through it, was there anyone that you thought, you know, really stood out as a bargain in the Fantasy League? Or someone that you thought, this could be a sleeper mm. pick? Well, I, I didn't think many were bargain. I thought many players were expensive. Yeah. To be honest, I, I couldn't really have my best team that I would wish to have because, you know, with the limited budget, we have to move players around. So, like, for example, I really wanted to have Lukaku in my team, but I couldn't. So, I picked the alternative, Martins. Trees Martins, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think he did, he did well for Napoli. Mm, yeah. yeah, so yeah. credit to him. I took him in. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think that's the fun part about Fantasy League, right? Yeah. 
you, you know, if you have everything you, you wanted, then it's yeah. no competition. Exactly. So I, I always tell people, if people say, does my, I get people message me and say, does my team look good? And I'm like, yeah, on, on paper, your yeah. team looks good. <laughs> my team looks good. Your team looks yeah. good. Yeah. Her team looks right. good. But you just never yeah. know. There Until will always be a player yeah. who scores a hat trick that, yes. that someone no has, no one else it. has. And I guarantee one of these strikers that we've had up here, we've seen all the big names. One of them will only score one goal. Yeah. And and and, and that's going to be Giroud for sure. I, <laughs> hope, I, I hope it's Giroud. Wow, wow, wow. He doesn't want it to be Kane. But how, how about the consideration of having more players who would likely make it into the later stages of the so, tournament? So that's one of the things we're going to talk about next week. Next week we're going to talk about how you use your chips, mm. right? You have your wild cards mm. that you can play. And you can add players as you go through the tournament. And, and ideally, you want to get to a situation where in the final, you have eight from one team and eight from the other. Yeah. Wow. Um, yes. And you're going to have to think about how you work your way through. The most difficult part for that is the round of 16. Mm. How do yeah. you get from the group to the round of 16 is okay. But how do you get from the round of 16 to the quarterfinals, yes. where eight teams will disappear without doing a lot of Tricky, transfers? Yeah. So it's, a, it's difficult. And you yeah. talked earlier about the money. We're used to when you do FPL, you, you spend money on, on five, six players, you put some rubbish on your bench yeah, and you yeah. don't care if it yeah, plays yeah, or not. Yeah. But because of the sub-rule we talked about, you actually want to spread the yes. money yeah. and, and try to have an even spread. Yeah, so yeah. so who's, how are you going to do, Fabian? Well, <laughs> I mean, looking at a uh, thousand players, Thousand players? Yeah, a thousand players. Then what, are you, what, are you, what are you targeting? Well, Where yeah. are you targeting? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, a top fifty percent, top half finish will be yeah. reasonable okay. for me. Okay. I think. So you're not going for the AFC Champions League? <laughs> no, not too ambitious on places this one. Yeah, here. Keep that for Hogan. Yeah, 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 correct. Okay, well, best of luck yeah. to you. Eh? Thank you. And best of luck to me and. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm well. going to wish I'm you a bit, I'm a bit nervous now. I always say this every episode, James, but yeah, you know, when I'm up against the FPL, like, champion, he's such a pro no. here, so... <laughs> really not. Yeah, if he sleeps, I'm going to have to review my team as well. Yeah, <laughs> how many days do we have? We have a couple of days to review you, it, right? Well, I mean, the first points get scored tomorrow night. Yep. So Friday night, Saturday morning, Singapore time. So you want to make sure your team is in by then um, and that it's set up because the points start scoring, yeah. That was some great stuff, guys. We've, don't forget to join our OTH Fantasy League. All the information is up here on the screen. We want like at least 2,000 or 3,000 players more to join us. We've got loads of prizes. Please, guys, join us. And for now, I'm going to go back to OTH to find out how the women do in our Skills Challenge. So earlier on, you saw the SPL Skills Challenge for the men. Well, now we have the same challenge, but with eight of our Singapore Lionesses. So let's see our women's national team players take on the skills challenge. So Mira, you're our goalkeeper for the ladies. Which yeah. challenge do you think you're most worried about them scoring on you? Well, every challenge has its own challenges. And I think I'll uh, do really well for all of them. Ah, confident. Okay, so European Championship. Who's going to win? Italy. And which player are you most looking forward to seeing play? Casper Michael. Okay, well good luck Mira, go get him. Alright. Which challenge here are you most looking forward to? I'm looking forward for the crossbar challenge, of course. Which yeah. player you think is going to stand uh, out? I think it will be Harry Kane. We like that, we like yeah. that a lot as a first fan. Good luck Fana, go for it. Okay, thanks. You scored 50 points. How do you feel? I felt great. I felt I did well. Could have been better still. Yeah. Well done. Thanks. 
Great stuff over at OTH. I'm definitely looking forward to see if anybody is going to beat Farhana's score. Let's go Lionesses as I like to say. Now we're going to go to the next segment which is a very exciting one. I'm looking forward to this one. James is already looking very nervous. As you can see on screen, we have one of our Facebook uh, fans here, Jordan Tay, here in the studio to join us for our quiz challenge, our audience quiz challenge. Jordan, how are you? Like, Welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about, a bit about yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm um, currently Jordan and I'm currently a fresh graduate from NTU. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, congrats on your graduation. I have to ask you since the Euro 2020 show, which team do you support and why? Yeah, I currently support France because they actually won the World Cup. So, and they really have a very strong team with Kante and Pogba in the team currently. So, yeah, excited to see how this goes. There you go. So, you must know the Angolo and Kante song, right? The one I was singing earlier? <laughs> yeah. No? There you go. Okay, James, <laughs> let's get down to it. I can see he's very nervous. I want to take you through the audience quiz, really. We have two, I mean, we have around uh, two envelopes here. So, envelope A and envelope B, and we're going to give Jordan the chance to pick it. But before that, I want to just share that if the, whoever wins this uh, will walk away with their jersey, EPL jersey of the choice. If Jordan, if you win it, you get to pick whatever jersey you want. However, if you lose, we still have some Euro 2023 memorabilia for you. Consolation prizes, but they are dope stuff. I can tell you, I can guarantee you that. So we're going to give you first dips here first, since you're our first guest. You get to choose which one you want to go with, set A or set B? Uh, I think I'll go with set B. Set B. All right, just a bit of a reminder. Today's questions are about the Euro 2020 qualifications. They were written by an expert panel, I would say, of trivia heroes. Mm. <laughs> so I am a bit nervous here, but let's go to... You're nervous? You're yeah, I'm nervous on behalf of nervous. you guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go. Are you ready, Jordan? Yeah. Are you ready to beat James here? Now, Jordan, since you picked envelope B, we're going to go with James first. The question, first question is... Which nation took part in the Euro 2020 playoffs? Was it A, Norway, B, Slovenia, C, Albania, or is it D, Greece? These questions are a lot harder than I thought they would be. You want me to repeat um, that? I'm going to go with A, Norway. Ah, uh, nah. No. The answer is... It's Albania. Actually, no. It's right. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> the answer is Norway. Sorry, I thought it was Greece at first. Norway you had me, reached... You had me worried. It wasn't Greece. Like, that was the one I knew it wasn't. <laughs> so, James, one point. The answer is indeed Ooh. Norway. They reached to Euro 2020 playoff semi-finals, but they were beaten by Serbia in a 2-1 loss in extra time. See, the problem with letting the other person go first is now the pressure's all on you, Jordan. Okay? There so, just so you know. Go. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay, so next question, it's, it's A, right? It's so A for Jordan. Yeah. A would be your pick. Are you nervous? How are you feeling? You ready? Okay, so let's go. First question for you, Jordan. In the, in the Euro 2020 qualification, which nation took part for the first time? Is it A, Gibraltar, B, Kosovo, or C, Allen Islands? Which nation took part for the first time in the Euro 2020 qualifications? Uh, I think it's B, Kosovo. That's right, you got it right. It is indeed Kosovo who reached the Euro 2020 playoff semi-finals but were knocked out by North Macedonia in a 2-1 loss. Well, it's a tie. It's an easy, nice qu start. easy question. Nice easy question. start, guys. Nice start. All right, mm. next one. We go back to my co-host here. I know he's ready to win, but you know, Jordan, I'm secretly rooting for you. Okay, <laughs> next question. James, which was the first team to qualify from the qualifying group stage for the UEFA? Belgium. I don't even finish the question. The answer is Belgium. Absolutely, that's true. The answer is Belgium. Simple. <laughs> ten wins out of ten. Yeah, that was a fantastic run to the, to the finals. All right. Jordan, I'm going to go to you now. I think this is also quite easy. I think James would fancy this question, but I hope that you get it. Who was the top scorer for the Euro, Euro 2020 qualifiers? Who was the top scorer? I think it's Harry Kane. That's right. The answer is Kane. Harry Kane, 12 goals. Kane, 12 goals. And yeah. 5 assists. 2-2 two, two right now I'm seeing on the board. <laughs> getting exciting here. You see. I hope the Guys. questions are getting easier. <laughs> this is quite easy actually. Okay. James, question number 3. What was the highest scoring game in the UEFA Euro 2020 qualifying mm. group stage? There, there were two. You can, you can answer. You can get any of these right. Which was the highest scoring game in the UEFA highest Euro 2020 game. qualifying group stage? 
You can mention the nations. You can. You don't have to mention the score. Just give there, me that. There were. It, it's going to be a thrashing. Um, I think it was. It's either mm -hmm. Gibraltar or uh -huh. it was. It was Portugal, Hi. Gibraltar. Portugal, Gibraltar. No. Nah. Okay. Damn it. Nah. Okay. No. Sorry. So he got that one wrong. I can say the answer, can I, James? He gets a chance to steal it if he knows the answer. Do you want to try this one out? What was the highest scoring game in the UEFA Euro 2020 qualifying group stage? There are two options here. You can, any of them is correct. Uh, I think it will be the one where Italy won Armenia 9-1. Nah, I mean, the score is correct, but not the team. Unfortunately, it's actually Belgium and Russia. Both of them, uh, they both qualified and they both had a 9 nil scoreline. So okay. it is not any of those teams. At least, they, at least right. my point didn't get stolen. Yeah. That's okay. Good. okay. All right. So I'm going next to him, right? Yep, Jordan. Back to Jordan. Okay. See, can I just put this on the floor? It's just too sure, much. Sure, okay. just throw it anywhere. Go on. Okay. I think it's the third question for you, right, James? Okay. Uh, third question for Jordan, yeah. For you, okay. Jordan, which country ended the qualifiers? With zero points, with the lowest goal difference. Ooh. Which country ended the qualifiers with zero points, with the lowest goal difference? No, it's that's open. an open. That's an open it's question because I know the answer. <laughs> uh, I would say maybe. There are two options here. Two options, by the way. Uh, maybe it's North Macedonia. No, no, that's no, not the it's answer. Sam Marino who scored one but conceded 51. It's and not. And got zero. So zero points and a massively negative goal difference. Exactly. The country is correct. I'll give you that. It's 50, not 51. No, no, because they scored one, they conceded okay. 51. So it's goal difference of 50. Oh, there we go. That's why we have a... I'm that good. Point for James. There we have three points for James. Good try though, Jordan. Okay, so... Okay. Back to me. Back to you, yes. With a chance mm. to kill it. I don't like saying this guy's name, but anyway, how many goals, James, did Timu Puki score during Finland's qualifying group stage for UEFA Timu Euro Puki 2020? Timu Puki scored 10 goals. God, that is absolutely spot on. He did score 10 goals as the Finns qualified for their first ever Euro. Oh my God, where are we? Come on, come on, we can do it, Jordan. For the people of Singapore. You gotta get this one, Jordan. You gotta get this one, Jordan. So Pressure's four, on. Currently, the score stands at four to James and two to Jordan. Okay, we might go into the tiebreaker, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, so Jordan, your fourth question is: If a UEFA Nations League group winner has already qualified via the European qualifiers, is it A, their spot goes to the next best-ranked team among all the remaining teams? Or is it B, their spot goes to the next best ranked team in their league? Or is it C, their spot will be picked randomly by the UEFA administration? I can repeat that for you again. Please. If a UEFA Nations League group winner has already qualified via the European qualifiers, will it be A, their spot goes to the next best ranked team among all the remaining teams? Is it B, their spot goes to the next best ranked team in their league? Or is it C, their spot will be picked randomly by the UEFA administration. What is your answer, A, B or C? Uh, I think it's B. You're right! It is indeed B! Their spot goes to the next I'm glad best you, I'm glad you understood that question, Jordan, because I, had, I had no idea what they were talking about. So that's that's okay. right, it is now three points to Jordan. Jordan! Okay, last question. For James, this, this might be the one. You've got to get this right. Okay. Ah, this is easy. This is not fair. Don't say no, that. No, Don't jinx question. it. Don't jinx it. <laughs> okay, number five. The last question. Who was the Netherlands coach for their final qualifying win oh, against Estonia? It was Ronald Koeman who then went off to go manage Barcelona. Absolutely spot on. Five points for James. Jordan got his last question. Yeah, he's his last won already, question. but come okay. On come on, Jordan. Number five for you. The last question. Which team had the fewest booking in the Euro 2020 qualifiers? <laughs> Very disciplined. Demand. <laughs> Think of that. A very disciplined team. Like very organized. Always on time. Oh, uh, I'm going <laughs> to guess. 
<laughs> Italy. No, oh. Italian Germany, never Germany, Germany, time. Germany. Italians are never on time. You Germany. know that. That is right. It's Germany. <laughs> Germany with three yellows and one red. How are the Italians always on time, Jordan? Anyway, thank you so much for participating in our first ever Euro 2020 show quiz. I'm so happy to have you as well as James, right? Undefeated. Undefeated. Can nah. I just say undefeated? One show only. Yeah, 6 but 3. But you walk away with a prize of choice in the Euro 2020 merchandise. So we've got a polo tee, right? Yes, we have a polo tee for Jordan. And we will have another opportunity uh, next week for someone else to take on the challenge. And, and on the next show, the good news is, you'll be challenging Ash. Oh, okay, if that guys. makes people feel any, any better there. But you know, hey, thanks for taking part, Jordan. Really appreciate that. Um, and we will be giving a shout out for people to take part next time. Stay safe, Jordan. Take yeah. care. Yeah, Stay thank safe. you so much. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Goodbye. So now here's your chance to win a jersey as well. We've got a great competition. Our match of the week this week is England against Croatia, and you can win an England jersey or a Croatia jersey just by taking part in our competition. All you have to do is to leave your predictions uh, on our Facebook page right before kickoff. It's of course happening on Sunday, 13 of June, 9 p.m. We look forward to seeing all your entries, and I'm super excited to know the result. James, who's your pick for this game? Ah, I didn't even have to ask. Why did I even ask that question? Why am I stood over yeah, here? Why, why, why I want to be why? stood over, over that no. Ah. Oh. Uh, Okay. So, so I'm going for Croatia this time, guys. But maybe we'll, 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 we'll go with who's going to score the first goal. It's, it, it's the last goal scorer. Yeah, the last uh, goal the scorer. The way England play, they'll score first and concede late on. So <laughs> you may be better off picking one of these Croatian players. I don't know. But get it in before kickoff time in the video thread here in the comments. Put your name of the last goal scorer. Only one entry per person. Okay? Absolutely. And I look forward as well to next week's show. We're going to have some fantastic guests joining us as well. We have. Sasi Kumar, known as Singapore's Blade of God, for that goal he scored, I believe. We're looking forward to that. We also have Ernie, the most capped Singapore national team player. She's got 40 caps. Yeah, girl power. I'm looking forward to that. What else do we have, James? We have a Mo Salah signed Ooh. Liverpool shirt. You Liverpool fans out there, signed Mo Salah Liverpool shirt to give away on the show. So Wait, join us for that show. The show is on Tuesday. That's Tuesday, right. Tuesday, 8 p.m., same place, same time. You can follow us on our social media and see it there. Absolutely, it's going to be a big game as well, right? Ahead of France and Germany. I'm definitely looking forward to that one, guys. For now, James. Show one done, seven shows to go, and the Euros <laughs> is starting now. Absolutely. Vamos, guys!